It's still weird to me thinking that, yeah, we live in a time where there are so many WoW players who didn't play Wrath when it first came out. Wild. I mean, for so many of us, how we experience the game is framed by those older days. So, what am I doing? And if you're somebody who's not fueled by nostalgia or thinks, eh, I did that, don't need to again, should you bother with Wrath Classic? Especially since Wrath Classic and original Wrath are quite different. Some very much may even say that Wrath Classic will be better. Here's Chris Zerhood, right? He was a designer in Wrath, and he's back working on Wrath Classic. He's partially able to remaster work than he did in the past. That's pretty neat. So, nostalgia trip or actual good video game experience that will stand on its own in 2022? Honestly, the latter. Vanilla and TBC Classic felt more of their era, likely harder for modern players to get into. Wrath, however, represents the largest middle ground in almost every way. This is no surprise. It was an expansion of experimentation and modernization of wins and losses that, with Blizzard's Some Changes philosophy, may end up being better in surprising ways. And what better way to enjoy than Arthas, Rise of the Lich King, which is a bloody brilliant book that you can listen to for free with today's sponsor, audible.com forward slash Bellular code Bellular. Arthas Rise of the Lich King is one of Blizzard's best ever books. I mean, what better to listen to while you are leveling a fresh alt? It was Blizzard and Christy Golden's first ever bestseller and for good reason. I think little will set you up for enjoying the Lich King story more than this book. So that's what I think you should use, the credit from your free month on. But of course, you also get access to the entire Audible Plus catalog of thousands of audiobooks, podcasts, fitness, meditation, sleep aids, and more. Of course, Blizzard's catalog is on Audible too, so it really is perfect for the Warcraft fans. So, head up audible.com forward slash Bellular, code Bellular, and get your first month, including a free book credit, on us. And yeah, go listen to Arthas Rise of the Lich King. It's really awesome. And thanks to Audible for supporting the channel. Northrend is the best continent in WoW's history as far as I'm concerned. It strikes a balance between the old and the new styles of questing. It's not so directed and railroaded that it no longer feels like an adventure, but it's also not so archaic that it feels like sandpaper. It is the ideal expansion to crank up the music, the ambience, and just get immersed, sporting many of World of Warcraft's most memorable ever quest lines, ones that have to be experienced in context. I mean, Howling Fjord, it's just awesome across the board. Grizzly Hills is mm, near perfection. Ice Crown, packed with awesome set pieces. It really masterfully does feel like unwelcome territory. You've got the Storm Peaks. That's a scale to rival anything that Blizzard does today. Crusader Breidenbart, launching the attack on Ice Crown. There are so many fantastic moments and a wealth of world building and lore as you learn about the native peoples, their struggles, and the impact that yogg and Arthas have had across the land. In their glowing review of the Cataclysm expansion, PC Gamer said this, something has been lost with the new quest approach. One of the thrills of old WoW was exploring, discovering the world at your own pace. New WoW is a conveyor belt in which you input time and output a level 85 goblin mage. With that in mind, Northrend is the perfect balance. Give it your attention, allow yourself to be immersed, and it will reward you. Dungeons. A strength and a weakness. I mean, easier and more accessible than TBC's Heroics, which is probably great for a lot of people. They were enjoyed by many, but they were also kind of clowned on back in the day. I remember that. I mean, certainly they were a bit harder than a, a Heroic Dungeon today, but they were really quickly made a cakewalk. Uh, bar perhaps the Halls of Lightning, which did kill many a group. The launch set of dungeons is actually really great, I think, in Wrath of the Lich King. And the process of gearing via dungeons and crafted gear 
is really fun. I mean, hell, I still remember getting the, oh, the big red sword from King Ymiron. It won't ship with a random finder because that came in patch 3.3. I think that does make sense because of that. So instead, that does mean that you will be doing your daily heroic quest from the quest giver in Dalaran and for future phases, something that I think is, man, extremely exciting. And this is a major factor in my personal decision. You see, the Wrath dungeons, in a way, were just left behind because they became a total cakewalk. And then when the finder came in, they were just a mindless grind for badges, right? And, and that's just the way that it kind of shook out. But Blizzard's new Heroic Plus mode is going to tackle this problem in pretty damn epic fashion. It's essentially a hard mode that you activate outside the dungeon. It will scale the dungeon's difficulty up, maybe adding a few more mechanics. Don't worry, nothing like Mythic Plus, no timer. Um, and it will have the dungeons drop 10-man raid loot from the previous raid tier. So when Ulduar arrives, you'll be able to run Heroic Plus dungeons for Nax 10 gear. So the idea here of doing harder dungeons with my friends for good loot. That is super exciting to me. So I hope they're able to nail the best of what made the Cataclysm Heroics so fun at launch. But of course, since there's no pre-made finder, your group quality will be higher. And believe me, the problem with, with Cataclysm Heroics, it was the finder. Yeah. And since there's no timer, there's no key depletion or any of that bullshit that makes World of Warcraft's Modern Mythic Plus sometimes feel so bad in pugs, man, I just think that the process of getting a new character up and geared will be so much more fun with this. And a whole niche of harder endgame content has been opened up. This is music to my ears. I want you to imagine ICC Trio in Heroic Plus. Now that's gonna be good shit. Raids, oh man. ICC and Ulduar were absolute titans. And being real with you, I actually did enjoy Trial of the Crusader a lot. It was the first time that I actually became like a sweaty DPS player. Uh, but really, that raid, Trial of the Crusader, it was the start of my like journey to become like becoming a proper endgame player. You know, things like simming my hunter's damage on femaledwarfhunter.com, watching Kraparian Warcraft videos. And of course, let's not forget Nax Ramus, which is getting a special treatment this time around. Blizzard are buffing it. I believe it's 30%. It was a total cakewalk on launch, right? And Blizzard always wanted the Wrath Nax to be easier than its 2006 version, but the 06 version, it had massively low participation because of more than just difficulty. Like, it was hard, but also, there was a humongous gearing hill for people to climb, and it wasn't even out for that long before TBC came out. But anyway, they totally overshot or undershot whatever the difficulty was way too easy. And now that it's going to be harder and relevant, I mean, that actually means that Wrath Classics Nax is going to shine where Wraths didn't. And that is just really, that's just really brilliant. Then add to that the one boss raids like Eye of Eternity, Sartharian, and later Anixia. And I think Wrath Classic is going to be packed with things to do. There's other neat things like neat little changes to badges. Uh, they're tweaking some Trials of the Crusader lockouts to be a bit more friendly. And they're making Nax 10 drop Nax 25 level t uh, like gear once Ulduar comes out. And that's their new system for actually catching up when you're raiding, right? Same for Ulduar into Trial of the Crusader. I think that's really cool. Like between that and the Heroic Plus, it just to me feels like a fantastic remaster of an expansion that itself was defined by change and experimentation. I think I'd also just say that Wrath had great professions with loads of depth. I remember the economy being nice and uh, vibrant. The dailies were pretty good too. The whole Argent tournament is just a place Place that I love. Now, it would probably take two characters to see all of Northrend's quests as well. I just think that seeing classes in their older state, that's always a treat. And launching with 3.35 changes already being applied to classes, it does mean that some of the quirks and the balance issues will have already been addressed. Having the likes of Jewel Spec, which originally shipped with 3.1 at launch, is uh, lovely too. And of course, there is the lack of LFD. Now, I get why that is a divisive topic. What I'll say, though, is, I mean, I remember playing through all of 
of Wrath of the Lich King. I'm okay with the pre-made finder being the thing that's there. Uh, what I will say though, is that finding a guild truly is worth it. Uh, not only will you have more success, you may even make lifelong friendships that will transcend the game that's the power of MMOs. You know, with the way that groups are even formed on live, I do think that actually finding groups to play in is not going to be a big issue. Certainly not as bad as maybe you would have remembered it from the past because even regular servers have like double the population of a full or nearly full server from 2008, right? So the actual populations to play with should totally be fine. If that was a concern and you wanted LFD for the shorter time to get into a dungeon uh, because it was based on a battle group. As for me then, well, I started off as a new warrior. I spent my days doing dungeons, VOA, Sarth, uh, mining to earn my epic flying. I left for a few months. I came back and I was leveling a hunter while Ulduar was going on. Then I hit my stride as a raider in patch 3.2 and onwards. And as such, I have a lot of unfinished business with this expansion. So yeah, I'm back. Of course I'm back. But I do have a confession to make. Originally, me and the guys wanted to level on a fresh start server, but here's the problem. Between working on projects that I cannot talk about yet here and uh, the things with our game studio for the Pale Beyond 2022 release, I mean, like as an example right now, like today, I've literally been like editing a bunch of um, like trailer stuff. I mean, it's been so hard to find the time and that does mean that I've had to bite a bullet. I'm going where we have to boost. It's the only way we can be there for launch and missing launch is absolutely not acceptable under any circumstances to me as, as a player. Uh, if it is any consolation to you, Blizzard already gave me the upgrade code. So on the one hand, yes, it is streamer privilege. On the other hand, you can rest assured that yeah, while my character was boosted, they didn't get any money for it. But you might be thinking, I don't want to boost. I feel like I've missed the boat. I'm really sad about this. What do I do? I would say, don't worry about missing the boat. Don't worry that much. And here's why. Number one, you'll have fun getting your characters going at any point here. Then patch 3.1 is going to be an absolutely fantastic time for you to start your Wrath Classic journey because you'll be doing Heroic, you'll be doing Heroic Plus, which will get you Nax 10 loot. And then they're making it so the Nax 10 will drop Nax 25 loot when that happens. So you can move from your Heroic Plus dungeons into doing a few Nax 10 pugs. And by that stage, it will be nice and puggable. That will be a great way for you to still see Nax Ramus while gearing up your character. And then you can hop into Ulduar. So I think you'll honestly just have a fantastic progression there. That's just me talking in terms of raw loot drops. Obviously, there's the badge gear as well. And I suppose with Heroic Plus and stuff like that, some of your gear progression is going to be a bit faster than it was back in the day. I suppose that's just something that I'm okay with because hey, at least the speed increase in getting your gear in patch 3.1, at least that will be via you actually playing content that's not a face roll, assuming they get the tuning right. So there we go. In a few hours, I will be playing Wrath along with a whole bunch of you. And of course, be sure to check out today's sponsor, audible.com forward slash Bellular code Bellular, where with the, uh, the credits that you get with your free trial, you just pick up Arthas Rise of the Lich King, which is a really awesome book. Yeah, have fun with that. Okay, take care. Enjoy. Times like this do not come around often, so let's make the best of it. Have a good one.